credit debit note icon is used to decrease or increase the amount owed to a vendor based on either invoices or returns that have occurred. For all credit or debit notes, enter the document number provided by the vendor. To recall an existing credit or debit note, enter the existing number. For all documents, enter or select the value number. ACPAC provides entry of a credit note against either an invoice or return, while a debit note can be entered against an invoice. In the previous session, items were returned to the vendor. Let's now create a credit note so the vendor account is credited in accounts payable. To prevent the credit or debit note from being active once it reaches accounts payable, select the On Hold option. Then, enter or select the document number, in this case an invoice number, to be credited. As long as the history has not been cleared for the document, the invoice number is available to be recalled. ACPAC then displays the detail lines that exist on the invoice. ACPAC also displays the purchase order number associated with the selected invoice. If a single receipt was created earlier for multiple purchase orders, only the first purchase order selected appears. Accept or enter the date of the note. The posting date determines the period that transactions are updated in the general ledger. The date either defaults from the invoice date or the date ACPAC was started depending on the default posting date switch within PO options discussed earlier. The year and period corresponding to the posting date displays from the fiscal calendar. Enter the total amount of the credit note in the credit note total field. If a remit to location was defined on the invoice, that location exists in the remit to location field. The same is true with the bill to address. Next, the vendor account set displays the code used on the invoice. Normally, this field should not be changed here because credits entered should update the same general ledger accounts that were used when the original invoice was posted. If a credit note is entered against a return, the account set from the receipt appears. Optionally enter any description or reference information for this credit note. The lower portion of the window displays the items and field values from the invoice. For credit or debit notes that do not reference an existing document, enter or select the item information being credited or debited. For existing documents, enter the quantity of the item being adjusted, and then enter the unit cost. If there was a discount provided on the original invoice, accept or enter the discount percentage or amount. If tax is factored in the cost of the item, the tax amount is displayed next. Optionally change the tax settings as discussed earlier by selecting the item tax button. The next field is the weight unit of measure. If weight is assigned to the item in inventory control, ACPAC displays the weight unit of measure and the weight of the item. The extended weight is calculated by multiplying the quantity by the unit weight. If a vendor unique item number existed on the invoice being credited, that item number appears. Next, the system displays the sales order number that exists on the invoice being credited or debited. Optionally enter any comments or instructions for the credit or debit note. If the item being credited or debited is an own stock, the expense account field displays the general ledger account from the invoice. In addition, if the item is a non-stock item, the non-stock clearing account entered on the invoice appears. The receipt number field displays the receipt number where the item detail originated. This is useful if the full multiple receipts option was used to combine more than one receipt on the invoice being adjusted. The manufacturer's item number is displayed next. If one was entered earlier on the invoice, the optional fields field is where optional fields specific to this item detail are entered. Optional fields assigned to the credit debit note as a whole are entered on the optional fields page here. 
Although the RACPAC automatically calculates tax when necessary using the tax settings from the invoice, the Item Tax button allows the tax settings to be changed for this detail line. The Item Tax button also allows the container section of the window to appear as one window, so all the fields can be viewed without having to scroll left and right. If any tax settings are adjusted for the item while entering the credit or debit note, click the Calculate Taxes button to have the system recalculate the new tax values. As discussed earlier, the Taxes page displays the tax settings for the vendor side of the tax calculation process. The assigned tax values default from the invoice or return being selected. For all documents being entered that do not reference an existing posted invoice or return, the tax settings default from the vendor profile in Accounts Payable. The Additional Costs page is where non-specific inventory expenses are entered that the vendor is crediting or debiting. For example, expenses such as shipping or handling fees that may or may not be factored into the cost of the items. For existing documents, additional costs automatically appear with a default of zero. For new documents, enter the additional costs that the vendor is crediting or debiting. With this document, let's assume, for example, that $5 of the original shipping charge is being credited. However, there is no credit available for the custom packaging charge. For existing invoices and or returns, ACPAC displays the proration method selected when the additional cost was created. For new documents, select the proration method as discussed in the receipt and invoice sections of this training course. The optional fields page displays any optional fields assigned to the credit or debit note header section. Again, optional fields are discussed in another course. If multi-currency is installed and configured for the database, a rates page is available. This is where changes can be made to the exchange rate information if the vendor's source currency is different than the company's functional currency. Optionally change the rate type, date associated with the exchange rate, or the actual rate itself. The Totals page displays the Credit Note Totals window. Optionally enter a general comment that prints on the credit note and observe the total weight of the items being credited for those items where weight was entered. Also observe the credit note subtotal, any entered discounts, the calculated tax amount, and the credit note total. The bottom portion of the window contains another row of buttons. These buttons are visible from any page. Click the Post button when the credit note is ready to be posted. As discussed earlier, the History button inquires on previous purchases for item vendor combinations, including items that have returns, credits, and or debit notes assigned. When the credit note is complete, click the Post button to post it. You then have the option to print the credit note immediately or save it to print later. Now, let's take a look at the Copy Purchase Orders function.